All right, today we're going to take a look at a vintage MRE. This one is menu number 18, turkey breast with gravy and potatoes. This one is sometimes called the Thanksgiving MRE. And this one comes from the Warner Company, and it does not have a date code on it, so we're going to have to open it up to find out exactly when it's from. This one is one from a group that was sent to me by Mike Ziegler, and I've already done one of them. It was a beef teriyaki from 2003. It did not survive very well. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, these things aren't meant to last all that long. So if you, every time you opened up a vintage one and it was in perfect shape, there wouldn't really be much mystery in it. Part of the interest of opening these older ones is just seeing exactly what kind of shape they're in. If they're edible. Sometimes they're edible, but they're not great. Sometimes they're perfect. Sometimes they're not edible. So why don't we open up this one so we can find out just how old it is and what kind of shape it's in. I will say, it, as I mentioned, it does not have a date code, but this menu was produced between 1997 and 2003. It's actually longer than I thought it was around. I have never had this one before, so it's another thing that makes it interesting for me, my first time trying it. And I, I thought maybe it had been around for four years or so. I didn't realize it had been around for seven years. So like I said, that was kind of a surprise to me. And the only other thing to note is that when I was getting ready to film this, I noticed that it seemed like there was something sticking inside. I can't really get it to do that now. It seems to be somewhat partially vacuum sealed, which is a good thing, but um, this side here was was kind of like against the uh, the boxes inside, and when I tried to move it, it sounded like it was... Uh, I don't know if you can hear it. It kind of sounded like something was sticky in there. So that may or may not be the case, but I'm trying to see if this is a... There's almost like a, a crack forming in it, but it doesn't seem to have gone all the way through. All right, so we'll go ahead and open this up and find out what's inside. Yeah, there's definitely something sticky in here. Something has burst. Oh, wow. Yeah, you can see that. So hopefully it's some kind of a... Uh, dessert or a candy or something, but yeah, that's that's a very bad sign. Yes, indeed. It's all over in there, so this is gonna, I'm gonna need to do some some cleaning of this one. Oh, wow. You know what? I'm wondering if there's jelly in there. That could be it. Something, uh, I don't think it necessarily burst. It probably got, uh, had some pressure on it. And uh, I've never seen this before. I literally cannot get this out of here. Alright, this could be a short review if I can ever get it out of here. So my original thought was that I kind of wanted to save this bag. Um, nothing particularly rare about it, just the fact that I've never had it before and the fact that it's the Thanksgiving MRE. But it looks like I'm going to have to slice this open just to get the stuff out of here. Wow, what is this? It doesn't seem to have any smell at all. Uh-oh, here it is. I found the culprit. The last one, I believe, it, the problem it had had to do with uh, heat, and this one has Jolly Ranchers. I don't see any leakage in here, but yeah, there's definitely something missing in here. It looks like the top of it liquefied. Long-lasting, intense fruit flavors. Yeah, the top of it liquefied and apparently leaked out of there. So we have that. We have peanut butter. Luckily, the things in the uh, retort pouches, I can clean them. Crackers, All right, and also uh, 
Oh, it looks like this is a first year of production. The day code on the crackers is 7114, which would indicate it's from 1997. It's kind of cool. I find this ration heater. Seventy-second day of 1997, so definitely 97. Uh, oh yeah, look at this uh, different colored packaging. Look at the older ones. We have beverage-based powder, grape, the 218th day of 2016, and unfortunately this box has had it. Wow. This doesn't smell sweet. And that's grilled turkey breast fillet with potatoes and gravy chunked and formed. That really makes it sound appetizing, doesn't it? Here are the ingredients if you want to check those out. A lot of ingredients there. And here are the nutrition facts too. And I think we've already kind of solved the mystery, but here's the date code on this. It's 7116, so the 116th day of 1997. So I'm 22 years old. We have a ton of components in here, which in a way is good, because the less components there are, the less there are to get sticky. And we have the accessory pack, which looks like uh, it left its um, date code on something else when it gets stuck to it. And we have some Tabasco sauce in there. It's very dark, but it's it's liquid. That's a good sign. I want to clean this stuff up before we open it. We have our spoon. And we have a pound cake, water activity stabilized, 1997 pound cake. So a little bit of delamination, I think it's probably from all this, uh, all the stickiness on it. And what flavor do we have? We have orange. I'm not sure that I've ever had an orange pound cake before. Judging by what we can assume is poor storage conditions from the Jolly Ranchers melting, I'm going to say that... It may not be edible, but we'll, we'll, we'll check it out. Uh, let me see if I can clean this stuff up, and we'll check everything out. Alright, here's everything that's in this one. I did have to take the entree out of the, the box because I wasn't about to try and clean that. and That's pretty nasty. I actually had some weird discoloration on this side too, but I think it's just from the cardboard being wet. But anyway, other than the box, this is what we have, a pretty modest sized MRE. It's dead giveaways that it's an earlier one rather than a later one, besides the date codes. We have all different colored retort pouches, whereas nowadays they'd all pretty much look the same. And the fact that there's just less stuff in here in general. We can see a great example of the problem with having commercial components in MREs. Putting something in like Jolly Ranchers, Reese's PC, something like that, is a great morale boost. But they're not in retort pouches, so they're not meant to last very long. Probably not even as long as the three to five years that MREs is supposed to last. And they're also not going to hold up as well, not only to age, but also to heat, as we saw with this one. And I believe all the ones in the lot that I got probably were stored in the heat. I'm guessing maybe they were in, in the desert, possibly overseas, I'm not sure. But the 2003 beef teriyaki I had showed definite signs of heat problems, heat issues. And we can see on this retort part some just interesting little grid work from when it was packaged, apparently. It would be great if this was edible. I have a feeling it's not going to be. I would definitely like to try this since I never had it before. I don't think I've ever had an orange pound cake, so I'd like to try that too. We'll see what happens. Let's check it out. All right, and I'll make an attempt to heat up the entree in the flameless ration heater. They said it's uh, from the 72nd day of 1997. So 32 years old. Not something you would expect to work all that great, but we'll give it a try. And because it's sold, I'm actually going to try to activate it first before putting a pouch in. Not how the directions say to do it, not how you should do it, and one that's going to be working really good, but for the sake of getting it to activate, I'm just going to add the water. Try it first without salt. I'm well aware of the salt trick. It's an awesome trick, but I do like to, since I'm doing a review, I do like to see if they'll activate and at least give them a chance. I'll give that a minute or so. Alright, it's been a couple minutes and it's actually doing a little bit of something. Starting to make a little bit of sound. But 
it does not look like it's going to really take off. So for the sake of the entree and wanting to have it hot, I actually already put that in some hot water to uh, heat that up. But I did notice that I neglected to open the accessory pack after I cleaned it up. So it's also a good test of the waterproof qualities of an MRE because obviously the outer bag is tough and pretty waterproof, but even if water gets in, other than the commercial components, everything should be fine inside of it. And in this case, that, that is the case. Everything in here is nice and dry, despite the fact that I had to really wash this bag down and it's still sticky. But let's see what we have in here. We have iced tea drink, so we have two cold drinks, along with the um, grape beverage powder. No coffee, so we don't get a chance to see how good or probably bad Coffee would be, especially if it was like Taster's Choice or something like that from 1997. There's some white tip matches. Moist toilet. This stuff's getting sticky because my fingers are sticky. Toilet paper. Salt, which we'll use in a second. Chewing gum. And the Tabasco sauce, which is, as I said, it's still liquid, but it's also really dark. There's a date code, also 7072 for date code. So let's just see if we can add a little salt to this Fenless Ration Heater, just for the heck of it. Let's see if that helps. Yeah, it's getting hot pretty quick. So I'm just going to put this aside and just see how well it heats up. I'm not going to bother putting anything in it. Really isn't anything else that needs to be heated up, the peanut butter. That doesn't need to be heated. I only want the pound cake heated, so I said we'll just put this aside and I'll I'll check in on it in a little bit and see how it's doing. And the flameless ration heater, I picked it up and it kind of deflated, but it actually you can see it actually is puffing up with steam, and it's very hot. I think this actually would have done a good job heating the uh, the entree, thanks to the salt. But we're beyond that. Now I do have some fears. Uh, I'm gonna try these, open up these crackers and. I have a feeling it's very likely, chances are that these are going to be bleached out. But, let's we'll check them out. A little bit of a hiss. And now comes the moment of truth. Whoa! They smell like crackers. Very impressive. As I can say this, it sounds like the most boring thing you can say that, hey, these crackers smell like crackers, but in the case of something this old that apparently has been stored not so well, it's a very welcome thing to smell crackers when you smell the crackers. It'll give the peanut butter a good knead. It's on the soft side. You can never tell when you get these old ones. Sometimes they're hard as a rock, sometimes they're really soft and almost like a liquid. This is closer to the latter. And we actually have steam coming out of the FRH. I am a little shocked. I really didn't think it was going to get this hot. That's pretty impressive. I almost feel a little bad about not using it, but at least we did activate it. So let's see the peanut butter and check the date code on that. 7080. These might not be might not be perfect, but they're not bleached anyway, so I'll at least give it a taste. And you can hear, I think you can hear this. Just from kneading it, it really released a lot of the outer layer of the retort pouch, and so that, that is showing signs of delamination. But it's pretty natural. I mean, it is almost a quarter of a century old, and I did just knead it a lot. And that peanut butter is looking just fine. You would not think this was 22 years old, the crackers or the peanut butter. So it looks like we're going to have at least something that we can eat out of this. And I guess the pound cake is next. This is one I'm more apprehensive about this because I'm really hoping to be able to taste this one. It smells pretty good. Isn't, yeah, I guess it has some orange smell coming off of it. Oh, breaking up a little bit. It smells a lot like the spice cake ones. It almost, the thing that's kind of weird, it almost smells like one of those nut ones, like a maple nut cake. It doesn't seem like what it's supposed to smell like, but it doesn't look too bad. It doesn't smell too bad. Definitely something we're going to take a taste of. So 
So we get some, some good signs here, actually. Right, the grape beverage is going to take 12 ounces of water. This is still powder in here. It feels a little bit, a little bit clumpy. Nothing too strange about that. Oh, hmm, that does not look great. It's like around the edge. It could be because of the packaging, but around the edge, it appears to be not the right color. All right. Well, I guess we'll be careful with this one. And the smell isn't that great too. These always do have a bit of a chemical sort of smell to them. This one only seems to have that. It doesn't seem to have the that sweetness from the almost like Kool-Aid kind of a drink that usually comes along with it. It's just just packaging and chemical and maybe staleness. So let's see what color this turns into. It does have a grapeish kind of smell. I'm hoping for the best with this one. And the iced tea takes eight ounces. The iced tea is one of those things I kind of miss from the older MREs. Discontinued that quite a while ago. It smells kind of like grapes. Doesn't look too bad though. But obviously, this is also not in a retort pouch itself. It is it is foil lined, but you wouldn't really expect this to last as long as a retort pouch. So this is going to be a little iffy too. Just leaves us with the turkey, gravy, and potatoes, which is incredibly hot because I had it boiling. And I guess we'll take one last check on the famous ration heater, which, as you can see, is puffed up nicely. And it does seem to be coming back down to earth, but that had some really good heat in it for a 22-year-old one. I would definitely not call it a dud. Getting some good and bad signs so far from this one. This is going to be the true test. Seems to smell good. It almost has a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a cheesy smell, which seems a little bit odd. But let's check it out. All right, that doesn't smell too bad. I'm really not sure how good or bad most of this stuff is going to be, but I think it's actually going to be possible to give it a taste. The Turkey and potatoes, it's uh, not like mashed potatoes or anything, it's these potato chunks here. And the gravy, the gravy looks pretty nice. And it's a, uh, I forgot that it was a filet of turkey, it was actually kind of hard to get it out of the pouch. I had to go in and uh, pull it out by hand. But let's try this. It's tough. I mean, that could be part of the reason they don't put turkey in their is because it does, it can tend to get tough. Give this a try. And I probably should have been a little more careful with that. I just kind of started chewing and just swallowed the whole thing. It's uh, it's not an excellent turkey. I mean, if you told me that was chicken or beef, I probably would believe you. It doesn't really come across taste-wise as being turkey, but it doesn't seem to be too bad either. As I was chewing it, I seemed to be getting a little bit of an after, a pretty quick aftertaste of packaging, almost a metallic quality, which is usually a really bad sign. But it was it was just a, a touch. Let me try the potatoes too. And yeah, that's pretty good too. Despite the fact they've been swimming around in here for 22 years, they still have some firmness to them. They're not like all soggy or anything. The gravy. That's where that sort of cheesiness seems to be coming from. I'm not sure what I think about that. And uh, now that I've actually eaten a pretty good amount for something that old, I'm going to let it settle in a little bit and see how my uh, throat reacts to it. I'm just going to take a quick look at this ingredient list and see if there's anything to explain that cheese flavor. 
I'm going to guess that it would probably be coming from this seasoning that includes maltodextrin cream powder, which has sweet cream, non-fat milk. So it's almost like probably some of this dairy stuff is sort of turning and it's kind of getting a, a, a cheese sort of flavor to it and smell, which, I mean, cheese is good. Like if this MRE had come with cheese spread, I actually wouldn't have minded that for the crackers, but you don't really expect it to be in your gravy for your Thanksgiving meal. Let me try a little bit more of this turkey. Now there's definitely a little weird aftertaste that you actually get while you're still tasting it. You're chewing it, and it's not a great, like I said, it's not really coming through as being very turkey-like. I'm trying to think of, you know, getting a little bit of burning in my throat. So yeah, this is not something you want to eat, eat all of this. But I, I, I'm, I'm getting that it what, probably wasn't that bad of an entree when it came out. Nothing really special, but for 1997 era MREs, it's really not too bad at all. And I do mention that this is frequently referred to as the Thanksgiving MRE. But this one doesn't seem to be in the best of shape, not as bad as it could be. But if you do want to see one that was in great shape, I forgot to mention earlier that Old Smokey, I believe it was last year, he did one of these, except his had been, he'd been really lucky to get a hold of one that had been frozen for many years. So his was in pretty much pristine condition, which is really cool to see. So I'll put a link to that down below so you can check that out. This one, I can't complain about this. For being 22 years old, you know, you wouldn't expect it to be perfect anyway. And I think you probably could eat this if you had to. I don't have to, so I'm not going to take a chance. But I ate a pretty good chunk there, and the potatoes aren't too bad. I don't seem to be suffering from it. So that's a good sign. Now we'll go ahead and try some of this cracker and peanut butter. So I said the cracker seems to be doing really good for being 22 years old. But let me just try some on its own, just to confirm that. Yeah, it might have a little bit of staleness. Otherwise, it's just bland because of the fact that it's uh, it's not very salty. It's not one of the ones that's like a saltine. It doesn't have any visible salt on it. I'm sure there's some in the mixture, but try it with the peanut butter. Yeah, that peanut butter is aged very well. And this is uh, a meal that doesn't necessarily scream for it, but because of the liquid nature, the gravy, it probably wouldn't be bad to gun dock it up a little bit and put some of these crackers in here. Crumble up the second one and put it in there. I'm just going to skip it for now because I think we know what that would do. It would probably improve the texture, maybe make it a little bit less uh, liquidy. We'll go ahead and try and clear the palate a little bit with some of this great beverage. Yeah, and it definitely smells like the packaging it kind of has a stale smell itself. You're not really getting that nice artificial grape smell with like a background of artificiality and uh, it's more like packaging smell with a slight hint or background of grape. I will say it does taste better than it smells though. And it's not as sickly sweet as they tend to be nowadays. It's a little bit more mild, which it couldn't have to do with the age. Um, we saw what that part looked like. It didn't look all that great, but it tastes pretty good. Which, speaking of tasting pretty good, that brings us to the orange pound cake, which I'm hoping is going to taste good. Oops. Ooh, yeah. It's a bit on the dry side. Flavor doesn't seem to be too bad, but I kind of really went for it, and uh, it's giving me that odd sensation along the side of my tongue. Mm, don't really like that. So something in here is turned, but it doesn't seem to be doesn't seem to be completely rancid or anything. Mild taste of um, orange. I'll bet when it was fresh it was a lot better. This is another thing I think you could probably eat, eat this if you needed to, but when you get those warning signs, like the, the burning in the throat and the sensation along the side of your tongue, it's a good sign that you really shouldn't be eating any more of it. But if nothing else, the crackers with peanut butter kind of saves the day. Give the iced tea a little taste. It smells good. Wow, it's weird. It's uh, I was taking a sip and it tasted perfect. It tasted just fine. And as soon as I started swallowing it, kind of like with the turkey, I get started getting that aftertaste of packaging and just something being not quite right with it. It looks like it looks like everything in here. It survived pretty well, considering I believe it was under high heat conditions, and obviously the fact that it's 22 years old. I think you could eat everything in here. I'm not going to take a chance any more than I have, but um, I'm impressed. I'm filming this just before Thanksgiving, and I've wanted to try one of these for a long time. So I really want to say thank you to Mike Ziegler for giving me the opportunity to finally try one. And now, 
let's take a look at this package of Jolly Ranches and see what's going on in here. Ah. Yeah, it looks like one of them just completely liquefied. That's weird. It's like this one top one just completely melted. And the ones below them, oh, actually this one, these are gone too. There's nothing in here. The ones below them seem to have some, uh, something in them. No, this is just a, just a sticky mess. Yeah, and it's softer than I thought it was. I thought it actually was solid down below. But, yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to get anything out of here. It's all just kind of melted and resealed itself over time. It kept its shape, which is nice. Yeah, it's just a, uh, a big block. I can't even get the packaging off. You can see it's just this big block of Jolly Rancher. I wonder if... Yeah, you know, I was kind of the only way I could taste it was to lick it, and it kind of tastes like a. You can kind of see it, it's almost brown. It kind of tastes like a combination of all the Jolly Ranchers, and I think that's what it is. I think they all, over time, just sort of melted together, liquefied, and then came back together as a like kind of soup and turned back into a solid. It's probably stored this way, so everything melted, melted down, and obviously some got out of the package and got onto everything else. So that's a mess. But certainly kind of fun to check out. So. As I'm um, filming this a couple days before Thanksgiving, I do want to say Happy Thanksgiving to everyone. I also want to say a big thank you to Mike Ziegler for sending this along. And still have a couple more to check out. It'll be interesting to see what kind of shape they're in. Let's have a little bit more of this turkey in honor of Thanksgiving. What the heck? Yeah, going by that taste, I can see why they, why they discontinued it. But I'm assuming it didn't taste like that when it was new. That sort of cheesiness is uh, it's a little off-putting. And yeah, once again... Twenty-two-year-old peanut butter and crackers comes to the rescue. You know what? Uh, I'm not going to bother with the Tabasco, but I will try some of them. Good way to clean the palate if you can get through the candy. It's a bit of a toothbreaker. Once it softens up, it's not too bad. And the moist towelette is still moist, and it will come in handy. It's falling apart, but. Can use that. So that was a look at a somewhat compromised menu number 18 turkey breast with gravy and potatoes from 1997, first year of production. Thank you for watching.